Now, James Marlowe is a political analyst based in Israel, and he's up next. James, welcome to the show. Good afternoon, George. Good afternoon to you, sir. Um, now, Colin Powell said this morning that Israel was uh, in danger of alienating uh, huge sections of uh, world opinion. Do, do you think he's right? Well, we're in a situation right now where there is a war. I think Israel has done... I want to try and, and stay away from sounding like I'm supporting Israel on this side because it's a, this is a war situation, and unfortunately, people die in war. I think Israel has done everything possible to actually prevent this from happening. And I think also that Hamas was taken by surprise, as many other people around the world were taken by surprise. In the last few days before Saturday, Hamas were edging Israel Israel on because they never thought that Israel was going to do this. As you know, they're in the middle of an election campaign. The election is on February the 10th, and um, people just thought that we have a prime minister, Echol Omid, right now, who's just a sitting prime minister. And the pressure was mounting upon the Israeli government to do something about this. Sibi Livni, as head of the Kadima party as well, actually outspokenly said that if she was in charge, she would do something about this. And I think you also have to take into consideration the people not just living in Steyrot and Nitivot and Ashkelon and now Ashdod, where they've been hit by a Grad missile, but the 500, 600,000 people that are in, within range of these missiles that have been coming over now for the last eight years, close to eight years. And it didn't have to be like this. Um, I did ask if you thought Israel was in danger of uh, alienating large sections of world opinion. Do you think it is? Well, I don't think so, no. Not in the short term and certainly not in the long term, because I believe the majority of people around the world, George, recognize that Israel wants this two-state solution. I know that some people support a one-state solution, whether that's Palestine and no Israel, or some people support one-state solution, whether that's Israel and no Palestine. The majority of the people support the two-state solution, Israel and Palestine. Why would it have to be worked out? But why, yes. why would George Bush's Secretary of State say that then, if it wasn't true? Alienating a number of people around the world. No, Look, the majority. No question. This has brought out a lot of tension right now. But if I can just quote the Czech Republic, who take over, as you know, the EU presidency on January the first, they've defended Israel. The Czech Foreign Minister said that Hamas has increased the number of rockets fired at Israel since the end of the ceasefire, and this is unacceptable. So you have the support of the Czech Republic, but not the uh, United States. Uh, of America's Secretary of State who thinks that it's uh, probably a mistake. Let me concentrate, James, on the efficacy of this rather than the uh, morality because I, I gave up debating the morality of it with supporters of Israel. Do you think it's going to work? Do you think Hamas is going to be crushed? Do you think, therefore, the operation will be a success? I can speak from Israel's point of view on this and say that now the objective is, although Israel's prime minister pleaded, literally pleaded with, uh, in, in, on Arabic radio and television, but pleaded with Hamas, renew the ceasefire. And that wasn't acceptable to many people in the south in Israel, but renew the ceasefire and let's review this after six months' time. I did hear something that you said very briefly on Saturday night on your show between uh, 10 and 10.30, which talked about how there hadn't been one one rocket or Katusha or Scud that had been fired from Gaza into Israel. By and Hamas. In fact, in fact, during that ceasefire time, which was six no. months... By Hamas. Don't, don't misrepresent me, James. I won't misrepresent you. I said by Hamas. By Hamas. Yeah. Or even by, oh, or, or by Islamic Jihad. No, I said by Hamas. Please don't misrepresent what I said between 10 and 10.30, because the listeners can go to my website and listen to what I said. Thank you very, very it was actually a 450 missiles that came over from Gaza into Israel during that ceasefire period. How many were killed? There were people injured. How many, look, were, how many were killed? Look, George, this James, is not a game. It's a war. Situation. James, how many were killed? Don't look upon... James, how many were killed? Are the ones who... James, how many were killed? On this. James, how many were killed? During that six-month period, we had several people injured. Nobody was killed during that period. That's what I wanted to establish. Um, now... There was a six-month ceasefire in which nobody was killed and in which Hamas did not fire a single rocket. But during that six-month ceasefire, indeed for a very considerably longer period, the United Nations has been describing 
the situation in the Gaza Strip due to the siege imposed by Israel as a, an ever graver humanitarian catastrophe. That's where my comparison with the Warsaw Ghetto comes in, you see. Um, when people are locked up like rats in a trap in the Warsaw Ghetto and in the Gaza Strip, they rise up, don't they? Well, I'm certainly not going to compare what happened to the Jewish people during the Second World War and what's happening to Palestinians right now. I just want to move forward and see how we can actually make this conversation into a constructive conversation and come away close to one o'clock with some type of an objective over here. Please don't think you're on till one o'clock, James, because there's, there's 25 other people trying to get on the air. I, I miss what you said there. I said, please don't imagine you're on till one o'clock, because well, there's, a large, very, number, very, there's very, a large number of people trying to get on. George, let's see how we can move forward on this as well. One of the things that I believe, without any question whatsoever, is all those people who support Hamas, who support Hezbollah or Taliban or Al-Qaeda or any of these organizations that's focusing on Hamas, who will be at demonstrations all over Europe, including Kensington, give extra might, give extra encouragement to Hamas who are throwing over these rockets. Once Hamas realizes that they will never get anything from Israel as long as they keep firing these missiles, one person yesterday was an Arab who was killed on the Israeli side. Six others seriously injured were Arabs. Hamas does not care who it hurts. It hurts its own people. When it took over Hamas, the whole of Gaza, when it took over Gaza, it just rounded up Fatah people. As you well know, you supported Fatah. It took them to buildings, very high buildings, and pushed them off while they were still alive. It does not care about its people. I am more pro-Palestinian than some of the people on these demonstrations, George. I believe in getting these Gaza, the real civilians, the 57 that, that, uh, that Umrah, that the United Nations say civilians were killed. I'm focused on those. That's a tragedy that's happened, that they've been killed, just like it's a tragedy on the Israeli side. But now we need to move forward and see how we can make their lives better. better. And I believe that when Israel withdrew from the Gaza Strip and took out 10,000 civilians, why? Because the Palestinians did not want them living by. I believe that the Palestinians had an opportunity to turn Gaza into a paradise. They had that opportunity. That's what the Jews did when they were there. They created jobs for the Palestinians. They made these greenhouse effects. They created the idea of bug-free lettuce and other vegetables. And yet as soon as the Palestinians took over those areas, they had a much longer range to fire these missiles in. And the world, even Mahmoud Abbas, Abu Mazen, you know he said, Hamas is to blame. Hosni Mubarak said, Hamas is to blame. Now you've got Nasser Nasrallah, Hassan Nasrallah in, he in Hezbollah in Lebanon, who's almost declaring war on Hosni Mubarak because he said those words. We have to move forward, and the only way to move forward is to stop these rockets. Once they stop, then Israel will stop. Then the borders can be opened, then aid can be brought in, and I can finally tell you the Gaza hospitals right now have become overwhelmed, and therefore efforts are being made, undertaken to take serious wounded Gaza residents to Israeli hospitals. Israel is arranging humanitarian aid to go into Gaza. It does not have a war with the Palestinian people. And one, I understand that you're a member of parliament, that you represent parts of East London. Whether you supported the organization or you didn't support the organization, if one organization was firing missiles into that part of East London or petrol bombs or fireworks every single day without let-up for close to eight years, and those residents came to you, they pleaded to you, and say, George, please, you're our member of parliament, help us out of this situation, you would have to act, whether you thought it was right or whether you thought it was wrong. That's exactly what Israel is doing. Thank you very much, James Marlowe, a political analyst based in Israel.